so what uh, rest of the chapter is focused on is something that relates to this waste hit. Um, this is what the caption on the picture above was alluding to that, um, that, you know, when people first uh, developed the steam engine, it's not like we had a complete theory of a steam engine and everything that's involved in it. It, it worked, <laughs> it was a great invention, but you know, there are details to, still to be worked out. Um, are there ways to improve it? Are there ways to make it more efficient? And this waste hit is a source of inefficiency because the larger this waste hit, the smaller the network produced is. So, uh, so smart people were trying to figure out, out uh, hey, how do we reduce this waste hit? And it turns out there's a fundamental law of nature that uh, prohibits you from completely eliminating the waste hit. You always need to have some waste hit. And that's what, um, yeah, let me just skip through here. And these are some details of uh, processes that can be used to describe the heat engine cycle. Um, and, so there's a, a law of nature that limits how small you can make the how small you can make the waste hit. Um, that law of nature is the second law of thermodynamics, and this is where um, so there's kind of introduction to reversibility and irreversible processes. And I think all this description of uh, irreversibility in the nature is important to have in mind to, um, to fully understand um, what we say when we, uh, to, to fully understand what we mean when we say uh, an engine is ideal. Because when we say engine is ideal, I want you to fully understand that we mean engine made up entirely of reversible processes, not a single you know, friction that uh, causes irreversible loss of mechanical energy. So, so I want you to have that in mind as we start to discuss ideal heat engines. And um, now in that ideal heat engine, um, I think the, the ideal heat engine that I'm encouraging you to think about is the Carnot heat engine. And I want you to fully understand just the, how idealized this is. There's a, no such thing as an actual Carnot engine. It doesn't exist in the real world because the processes that would be necessary to uh, have an actual Carnot cycle, um, it, Carnot cycle would, a real Carnot cycle would take forever to complete. So, so I first want to understand that when we talk about Carnot engine, we are talking about a, an idealized theoretical engine that so theor so ideal <laughs> that there's so much idealization that it cannot possibly exist. We are just using it as a tool to explore the limits of efficiency, which we'll get to here. <laughs> but when you look at this process, so this is what that idealized means. Um, when the engine expands, when it's doing the power stroke, it's uh, um, moving so slowly so that the engine is always at a constant temperature. It's moving along this isotherm that represents this uh, hot temperature. And the second part of the power stroke in the adiabatic expansion, uh, this uh, is uh, included as, because a source of inefficiencies where if the heat transfer takes place, so heat input, we want that to take place at the highest temperature possible. So in this uh, additional expansion, while the temperature is changing, if there's any heat flow, that would limit the amount of efficiency. So in this portion of expansion where there is a change in temperature, we are making sure there's no heat flow so that this expansion occurs without heat flow. And I, I guess this part isn't that hard to do. You just make things as uh, frictionless as possible. And then um, after reaching this uh, farthest expanded point, we now have to return the engine to the original point. So we start um, compressing it. 
And this compression happens so slowly so that engine is kept at this cold temperature, cold is the possible temperature um, for as long as we can keep it there. And, um, and here we want to make sure that any, so this is where you see there has to be some, there has to be some heat that's being expelled because as you're compressing, in order to keep this at isotherm, uh, you have to expel heat. If we are not expelling heat, then you would be just retracing this adiabatic expansion. So you will just return to the same temperature and we, you are not back at point A. So this isotherm is where, yeah, you have to expel heat. That's the waste heat. That's gonna lead to inefficiency, even in this idealized picture. So, so once you reach an appropriate point where uh, through adiabatic compression, you can return to original point, then this compression finishes up uh, um, to return you here. And this uh, isothermal contraction is where you have to incur waste to hit. This portion cannot be eliminated um, if you are trying to return the engine back to the original state. So when you take this into consideration and go through the calculation, this is the, the Carnot efficiency that you end at. And these temperatures has to be in Kelvin temperature, absolute zero scale. And when you think of the typical engine operating conditions, like the cold temperature, let's say you keep it ice cold. That means the, the cold temperature is 273 Kelvin. Then I hope you begin to see that this fraction is not gonna be zero. So the high temperature could be, I don't know, 1000 Kelvin. 2000 Kelvin. Um, if the high point is at 1000 Kelvin, then this fraction will be about a, um, one fourth, 0 0.25. So the efficiency will be 75%. And if this high temperature is at, um, at 2000 Kelvin, then um, this fraction will now be at, you know, like 10%, 0 0.1. So the efficiency will be 90%. And as you are thinking of those numerical examples, I hope you see that in order to have 100% efficient engine, just to, in ideal theoretical world, you need to have either infinitely high, high temperature, which, you know, probably isn't possible. Even the surface of the sun is only 6,000 Kelvin, or you need to have the cold reservoir of zero Kelvin which is also going to be quite practically impossible to maintain. So, so in any kind of situation you consider, so for this uh, highly idealized engine, your efficiency will not be 100%. So, so this is a limitation that heat engines work under and a Carnot cycle uh, quite uh, conclusively demonstrate that because it is quite literally perfect heat engine. It's a heat engine that can be as perfect as possible. And even then you won't have 100% efficiency. So, so I, I think that's uh, all the main points I wanted to touch on. This is uh, quite a long chapter and there's uh, some bit about second law of thermodynamics that I do get into in physics for a bit. And, and I would have liked to have some time to talk about which is the statistical interpretation of entropy and second law. Um, this is actually the thing I love about uh, second law because uh, do I talk about it here? There are many different formulation of second law of thermodynamics in thermodynamics. And the formulation that I, I don't think it's stated here, so I'll just say it out loud. Um, so under the statistical interpretation of uh, uh, entropy and second law of thermodynamics, you could, uh, this is how you could restate the second law. Uh, you could say the most likely thing to happen happens most of the time. And that's why disorder increases. 